Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on uh, lipid modification of proteins. In this video, what we're going to talk about is an experimental technique uh, known as acyl uh, biotin exchange chemistry. Okay, and this is an experimental technique uh, which can be used uh, to decide which proteins within a cell are um, palmitylated, basically. So we're going to continue our discussion of palmitoylation of proteins by looking at acyl biotin exchange chemistry, which is a way of determining which proteins are palmitoylated in a uh, cell. Okay, so we begin then with a cell. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to get a sample of proteins from the cell. Okay, so we've taken from our cell uh, a sample of proteins. So let's say here is our cell here, and we've now, um, you know, we've homogenized the cell down, and then we've separated out the proteins from the other components of the cell, from so from the polysaccharides and uh, from the uh, lipid molecules. Okay, so now we've got the proteins. So, um, just so that we have a picture, let's say that we have our sample of proteins here. Let's say we have protein A, let's say triangle protein, it can be called protein B, and then we've got protein C over here, which we'll have as circle. So, of course, we'll have far more proteins than just these three, but this will uh, do to illustrate the point. Okay, and let's say uh, that protein A has some palmitoyl groups on. So let's say protein A over here just so happens to have some palmitoyl groups on. And I'll colour these palmitoyl groups in, in orange here. Okay, and protein B and protein C are not palmitoylated, okay? So they do not have palmitoyl groups on. So we now want to see if we can find out experimentally which proteins within our sample are palmitoylated and uh, which are not. And to do this, we're going to use uh, acyl biotin exchange chemistry. Okay, so basically, the fundamental idea is that we're going to remove these palmitoyl groups from the protein and we're going to exchange them for a uh, molecule which contains a biotin moiety, okay? And we're then going to detect the biotin moiety and hence uh, come to the conclusion that protein A uh, did have palmitoyl groups on originally. Okay, so to understand this, we now need to discuss palmitoylation of proteins in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's start off just with a bit of revision now. What is the structure of palmitic acid? Okay, so palmitic acid is the old biochemist's name for uh, a molecule which would nowadays be called hexadecanoic acid, although everyone still use, uses palmitic acid. But its official name now is hexadecanoic acid, which is a better name for it than palmitic acid, because hexadecanoic acid tells you exactly what the structure of palmitic acid is, basically. It tells you that it's a 16-carbon carboxylic acid. So let's show the structure of this. Okay, so here is a carboxylic acid group. Now, we want the carboxylic acid to have 16 carbons, and we want it to be fully saturated. Okay, so it will then have uh, 14 methylene groups in the middle. So here's a methylene group, and because I don't want to have to draw out all 14, I will just circle this one methylene group that I'm going to draw. Uh, well, I'll not circle it, but bracket it, and put a 14 at the base there to show that it's got 14 of those methylene groups. And then right at the end, it then has a methyl group. Okay, so this is the structure of palmitic acid. Now, uh, when adding this onto proteins, you don't actually use the pure palmitic acid. Instead, what you use is a molecule known as palmitoyl uh, coenzyme A. So let me show you the structure of this. Okay, so palmitoyl, uh, sorry, palmitoyl uh, coenzyme A uh, is palmitic acid linked by a phyoester link to the coenzyme A molecule. So coenzyme A is often abbreviated to CoA for short. Now I'm not going to draw out the full uh, structure of coenzyme A. I'm just going to abbreviate it to a box like so. Uh, but the important uh, functional group that coenzyme A molecules have 
is they have a file group. Okay, so here they have a file group. Now, file groups are very similar to alcohol groups. So a sulfur atom linked to a hydrogen atom like this is called a file group. And I would encourage you to think of this as being similar to an alcohol group. Sulfur is in the same uh, group of the periodic table as oxygen, so it has very similar chemical properties to oxygen, and therefore sulfur linked to hydrogen is very similar to oxygen linked to hydrogen, which is of course an alcohol group. Okay, now alcohol groups can react with carboxylic acid groups uh, to form ester links, and so can thiol groups. Now when thiol groups react uh, with carboxylic acid groups, they react in pretty much the identical way, except that obviously we've now got a sulfur atom doing the uh, reaction rather than an oxygen atom. Okay, and the overall product is then called a thioester. So let me show you this. So, draw out the structure of palmitic acid again. So here is this terminal methyl group here. Okay, let me just move this up a little bit. Uh, then we have our 14 methylene groups. So here is a methylene group. Of course, we really have 14 of those, so I'll bracket it and put 14 there. And then we have our carboxylic acid group, which is going to now be linked uh, to this sulfur atom here. Okay, so basically you've taken the alcohol group off the carboxylic acid group, you've taken the hydrogen off the thiol group, you've bound them together to make water, so this is a condensation reaction, and now you've got the coenzyme A linked to the palmitic acid. And this molecule here is now known as palmitoyl coenzyme A. Okay, and you're going to use uh, palmitoyl coenzyme A uh, to uh, palmitolate your proteins. Okay, now, the main form of palmitoylation that occurs uh, within cells is something known as S-palmitoylation, okay, which is when you palmitoylate uh, cysteine residues within proteins uh, that are in the middle of the polypeptide strand. So let me show this. Okay, so, if we have our protein here, Remember that a protein is a polypeptide, so I'll now draw it as a sort of strand, like so. So it's a polymer of amino acid, it's amino acid after amino acid after amino acid after amino acid, etc. Okay, uh, and you have an amino terminus of the polypeptide, so the first ever amino acid in the polypeptide, its amine group, or its amino group, uh, will not be involved in a peptide link because there is no amino acid prior to it in the polypeptide for it to link to, okay? And the final amino acid in the polypeptide will have a free carboxylic acid group uh, because uh, it's the final amino acid, so there is no amino acid after it which the carboxylic acid group needs to link to, basically. Okay, so this side of the polypeptide is then called the amino or the N terminus of the polypeptide and this side is called the carboxy terminus or the C terminus. Now, palmitoylation or at least S palmitoylation of proteins occurs on cysteine residues which are in the middle of the polypeptide. So for instance if we take this amino acid here and let's say it's a cysteine amino acid and the single letter amino acid code for cysteine is C. Okay, uh, so let me now show you the structure of cysteine amino acids and then we'll see how you can add palmitoyl groups onto cysteine amino acids and why uh, there is logic in it being called s palmitoylation. Okay, so I will draw the cysteine amino acid as though it's within a protein. So I'll draw the cysteine residue. Okay, so here's its amino group that's bound to the carboxylic acid group of the amino acid in front of it. Okay. Then we have the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it, and then the carboxylic acid group, which will be bound to the amino group of the amino acid uh, that comes after it in the polypeptide. Okay, now the R group of cysteine amino acids consists of a methylene group, and then with a thiol group coming off it. Okay, so this is the structure of a cysteine amino acid. Now, Basically, you can palmitoylate this cysteine residue by adding the palmitoyl group onto this thiol group. So basically, you're going to form a thioester link, just like we have between uh, coenzyme A and the palmitoyl group. But now you're going to form that thioester link between the thiol group of the cysteine uh, residue and the palmitic acid molecule. Okay, so what you're going to do, basically, is you're going to 
break this bond between the sulfur atom and the hydrogen here on the cysteine residue, okay, and covalent bonds consist of two electrons, remember, one from the sulfur atom and one from the hydrogen. Now, I'm not going to show you the molecular mechanism by which this actually happens. I am not going to show you, you know, the electrons move here to here, blah, 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 blah. No, I'm going to just show you how this reaction makes sense. So, to make sense of this reaction, you can imagine giving one of the electrons in this bond back to the sulfur atom and one back to the hydrogen. Of course, that is not actually how the electrons will move. Homolytic fission doesn't generally occur in um, biochemical reactions. It's something that occurs in free radical reactions. Okay, uh, so uh, then again, you can imagine breaking this bond between the carbon and the sulfur atom here. And again, this bond will consist of two electrons, one from the sulfur atom and one from the carbon atom. Imagine giving one back to the sulfur and one back to the carbon. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to bind this hydrogen atom here to the sulfur atom, which also has a free electron, and that will regenerate coenzyme A for you. You will then bind this carbon, which has a free electron, with this sulfur, which has a free electron, and that will now have exchanged uh, the palmitoyl group off the coenzyme A molecule and onto the cysteine residue. So now let me show you the cysteine residue once it's been uh, palmitoylated. Okay, so again, here is the amino group, here is the alpha carbon with a hydrogen coming off it, and here is the carboxylic acid group, which will be linked to the amino group uh, further down. Okay, and the R group of uh, cysteine amino acids, remember, is a methylene group, like so, and then the thiol group coming off it, but now remember the thiol group has this carboxylic acid linked to it. Okay, so here now is the palmitoyl group. Okay, so there's the methylene group, and of course we need 14 of those, so I'll bracket it and put 14 there, and then one final methyl group on the end here. Okay, so you have now stuck a palmitoyl group off the cysteine uh, residue within this polypeptide. Okay, so this is known as S-palmitoylation of proteins because you have stuck it onto a sulfur atom that was off the side of the protein, basically. Now, this is the main form of palmitoylation that occurs to proteins within cells. Okay, so you take cysteine residues and you can add palmitic acid molecules onto the side of them, basically. And now you say that the protein is palmitoylated, or even better, S-palmitoylated. Now, in order to add this um, palmitoyl coenzyme A molecule onto the cysteine residue, there is an enzyme that is necessary to catalyze this, or in fact, a whole family of enzymes. And the family of enzymes which catalyze this are what are known as the DHHC palmitoyl transferase enzymes. Okay, so this is the DHHC palmitoyl transferase enzymes. Okay, and the palmitoyl transferase enzymes are all um, members of the family of, well, the bigger family of protein acyl transferases. Okay, so let me show you this. So. All palmitoyl transferases are members of this bigger family of enzymes, which is the family of protein acyl transferases. Okay, so an acyl group basically just means a carboxylic acid group once you've taken off the alcohol group, which of course you do do when you um, transfer it on. So for instance, here is the carboxylic acid group. If you take off that alcohol group, then what's left is the acyl group. And if you think about it, that's what you're adding on to the sulfur atom. Okay, so you're adding on an acyl group. You're not adding on the full carboxylic acid group. And protein acyl transferases are abbreviated to PATs for short, PATs. P for protein, A for acyl, T for transferases. Okay, right. Uh, so, that now covers palmitoylation. Okay, so... You can palmitoylate cysteine uh, residues within proteins. Now, we want to see uh, whether the cysteine residues within a protein are palmitoylated. Now, it is not necessary that all cysteine residues within the polypeptide are palmitoylated. So, if we go back to our original example up here, 
Let's now think of protein A, protein B, and protein C as being polypeptides. So protein A actually is a polypeptide, so I'll draw its structure out now. So it's basically a um, polymer of amino acids, okay? And it has some cysteine residues which have got uh, palmitoyl groups dangling off them like so. Okay, but not all of its cysteine residues are palmitoylated. Okay, now the way that acyl biotin exchange chemistry is going to work is that we are going to add groups onto cysteine residues. We're going to add uh, biotin containing molecules onto cysteine residues. The thing is, we only want to add them onto the cysteine residues uh, which have got palmitoyl groups dangling off them. We don't want to add them onto cysteine residues which don't have palmitoyl groups dangling off some, them. So the first step in acyl biotin exchange chemistry is going to be to neutralize the cysteine residues which do not have palmitoyl groups dangling off them. Okay, and we'll talk about that in the next video.